Happy Friday. <laughs> so my name is Enrique. I work for a company called Salesforce. I'm a software engineer there. Uh, my team is called Trailhead, and we are the learning platform from Salesforce. So you want to learn how to use Salesforce, you can just go to trailhead.com and learn from there. And today, I want to tell you a story. And the story is about once upon a time in a country far away, maybe called Rubinia, maybe not. There was a king who really liked to look at the moon. And this country was a very modern country. Trains were really fast and arrived on time. Some people even say that there were magic trains because they were really fast. Elevators ran on time. But for all the automation and all the benefits of, that come with it, there was a problem with the moon. And the moon, of course, is written in Ruby and runs on the cloud. And the problem with the moon was that sometimes it was unpredictable. It would come up on the east. Sometimes it wouldn't, you couldn't see it at all. Sometimes it would come up on the west. And sometimes it would even hide behind the sun. So one night, the king was trying to look at the moon. And he waited and waited. And he couldn't see the moon. So he was super sad that he fell ill. So the next morning, the royal doctor called all the king's family. And when the, the, the family came, the first one to show up was Elizabeth, whoever you want calls, just Ellie. And Elizabeth was a junior developer. She is starting to get into Ruby. And she said, hey, uncle, I'm here. How can I help you? Oh, Elizabeth, please help me fix the moon. <laughs> uncle, but I'm just a junior developer. Can you ask anyone else? Of course I can ask. I'm the king. I can ask whoever I want, but I, I want you to fix it. Okay, uncle, I'll go ahead and start fixing the moon. So she went and did a git clone of the solar system. <laughs> and she started looking at the code. And she looked, and she looked, but she couldn't find a moon class, not a file for the moon. So she started uh, amplifying her search. She did pussy shirt, and she was able to find a YAML file for the moon. <laughs> and as you can see, like the, the YAML file has the descriptions of the properties for the moon. But then she started thinking, how, how does this become a class that interacts with the real world? She, she started looking where are YAML files being used, and she got to this code, the star factory. That, of course, it starts with a big man. <laughs> and what, what basically this code does, it loads the data from all the YAML files for all the starts. And then once you have all the starts, you create one class per star. So far, very simple. But then when she started to look into where can she find the issue for the moon, she discovered this method called visibility from Earth, which is a complicated calculation. It basically tells you where are you and then where is supposed to be the moon. Uh, but we're going to simplify it because it's a Ruby conference. So basically, the moon visibility from the Earth is equal to the Earth position uh, multiplied by the moon orbit. All right. So there's the method, the find visibility, that tells you Earth, you find the Earth, and then you tell the position of the Earth and multiply it by the star of 
orbit, and in this case, the star would be the moon. So the next thing that she thought, well, there is probably an issue in that startup orbit. So I just need to find the orbit method for the moon, right? Well, we are wrong again. <laughs> Why? Because, of course, the method is defined dynamically, so there's no depth orbit. So you have to go and find it again this way. And as you can see, there's uh, a star finder that defines the sun, and then we use the gravitational field of the sun, uh, multiply by the velocity, escape velocity for the moon, and that will give you the orbit for the moon. All right. But she couldn't f figure out where was the issue, why the moon was behaving so unpredictable. So what she did was what everyone does. She looked at the code and started looking who was the last person who interacted with this code. And of course, it was the metaprogramming minister of magic. <laughs> so Elizabeth went into the office of the metaprogramming minister of magic, and she found multiple screens. Some screens have code, other screens had uh, graphics that were showing the performance of the systems. Other screens had a shopping list, and one screen had a console where he would run commands on the solar system. And well, I want to tell you that the Minister of Metaprogramming is a very important developer in the kingdom. He's one of the wise developers, especially because he helped uh, design and build the solar system. Uh, he also wrote code that could write code to test the train system. And of course, he also wrote code that would test the code that he wrote the first time. So in other words, he's a very smart developer. And the first thing that Ali said to the metaprogramming minister was, hey, can we create a new class for the moon? I'm having this problem, and I find it very difficult to change the solar system to fix the moon. And the metaprogramming minister said, no, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Maybe just tweak a little parameters on the YAML file and see what happens. No, but I don't think the issue is on the parameters. I think the issue is on the actual method. No, no, the code doesn't have errors. It has been running for a while. It could not have errors. Well, if that were true, the king wouldn't be ill. And he is ill right now. So can you please help me? No. And if you want to create a new class, go talk to someone else. For example, go talk to the object or in the general. <laughs> so Elizabeth left their office and went into the office of the object or in the general. And her office was filled of uh, computers, laptops, cameras, uh, spaceships, bikes, drones. Yes, that's a spaceship. Huh, interesting. Well, and the object in the general, she is a very important person and also uh, on, the, on the kingdom. She is one uh, person who designed and built the first automated jumping robot. She also helped design a drone that was able to deliver a pizza within five minutes of leaving the oven. So she's one of the wise developers of the kingdom, and she's going to help Ellie with the problem. Hi, Ellie. How are you? I was expecting you. Oh, yeah, the, the king sent me, and I'm here to solve the problem with the moon. And as they started talking about the problem, Ellie, Elizabeth described the issue with the moon, how she couldn't find a class, how the metaprogramming minister didn't want to create a new class. And the object oriented general started talking to Ellie. And they talk about the benefits of object oriented programming and how defining and translating the rules from the world into a computer, just basically using building blocks to, com to compose uh, a system 
and you start by adding a simple piece and then you add another one and another one until you have a very complex system. But in this case, the system that created the metaprogramming minister was very complicated to understand and very complicated to change. So what they did is they divide and conquer or they come up with the first version of the moon class. It was very simple and it has just a few properties and we are just going to focus on the method visibility from Earth. And again, it's the visibility from Earth that we talk to the orbit and we get the Earth position. So what is the bug? How can we find the bug? And they started looking and they found out that in the YAML file, there is a part that defines gravitational forces, gravitational forces. And there are two objects. It's not just the sun who uh, affects the, how the moon behaves. So it's the sun and the earth. And this is something that the code was not taken into consideration. If you remember, the, the sun or the, the orbit of the moon was being just affected by the sun gravitational field. So the object or in the general tells Twelly that she has to uh, complete the class, but she also, in order to fix this, has to create a method orbit or find a way to define the orbit in a way that is um, that satisfies these two classes, those two issues. The first one is that we need to find out where the moon is going to be and also where the moon has been. And this is something that we cannot currently do with the current code. And the other issue is that there is more than one gravitational source. And the object oriented general, she suggested that the first person to help Elizabeth with this issue is the royal functional mathematician. <laughs> so Elizabeth goes into the office of the object oriented mathematician. And this office is just different from everyone else. It's just white everywhere, just one screen, one computer, and one whiteboard. And you have to know that the royal functional mathematician, she's a very smart person. She helped design and build the timing system that allows the trains to arrive on time. But she also calculated the speed on which the king changes his mind. And the last thing that she was working on was the distance between here and there, no matter where you are and where here is, she has a function for that. And as Elizabeth was getting closer, she realized that there were notes on the whiteboard about the moon. <laughs> oh, hi Elizabeth, how are you? I was expecting you. Yes, I see that. Why is there a moon diagram over there? Oh, I thought you were going to come and see me because no one else could help you with the orbit of the moon. Oh yeah, thank you. But how do you know that? Well, I just calculated the probabilities that someone else helped you with that. And, and also, I don't think the object oriented general will help you with that. And the metaprogramming minister is too busy. She said Elizabeth started talking again about the problem, how she created a small class, but she found that the orbit method that she wanted to create uh, was very difficult for her to fill out. So that's what the reason why she was there. And the royal functional mathematician asked, Elizabeth, do you know where is the moon? Where right now is in the sky, but we cannot see it because it's daylight. Yeah, we, we cannot see it. You're right. It's something here that is missing. And we cannot see it because the time is not the right. And time is also a dimension. So a better question to ask would be, where is the moon and what time is, what time is the moon in that place? So one thing that they immediately do is they add time as a parameter to the visibility from the Earth. And we are going to pass that parameter to the orbit, and we're going to pass that parameter 
to the air position. So that's the issue number one. So now, let me ask you again, where's the moon? And the moon doesn't have static x, y, or z coordinates. The moon is constantly moving. So the best way to describe the moon is with a mathem fun mathematical function. In other words, the best way to describe the moon would be with a proc, for example. So now we have an orbit method where it returns a proc, and you can pass a parameter time to this proc. This would be really useful, for example, to draw a map of the stars. Uh, first, we define a list of all the stars that you want to put on your map, and then we already calculated the functions, and then you just need to pass the parameter of when you want to see the map of those stars. So that's why uh, an approach with this, like this, that is very functional, would work really well. The next thing that they want to work on is what objects are affecting the moon? And because of we already saw the Jamel, first is the sun and then the earth. So they work on something else. The uh, royal functional mathematician poses that they first they get uh, a list of a collection of stars that will affect, and we friendly will call it the gravitational friends because they'll they'll they use their influence onto the star, and then when we want to calculate the total gravitational force, we just need to uh, go to all that collection, call the gravitational field for each of those stars, and then zoom all that up. So as you can see, the code that has been generated so far is smaller, it's easier to understand, and it's somehow functional. And the royal functional mathematician tells to Elizabeth, your homework now is to extract the orbit method into a separate class, because other stars can also have orbits. You can also extract the gravitational fields, because other stars also have uh, gravitational fields. And the goal, your goal, is to have the moon class only hold methods that are unique, that make the moon unique. And just as a comparison, the class moon is so much easier to change than the solar system. And the other thing is that if you modify the solar system, you could crash the entire world or the entire set of systems. But if you modify the moon, you will reduce the risk of things that could go wrong. So Elizabeth goes back into her desk and started doing uh, her homework. And she finally finishes, runs the test, gets pull requests, and even the Metaprogramming Ministry of Magic approves the pull request, surprisingly. Wow, who had thought about that? But since it is just a class and the king is ill, it's high priority. So she, Elizabeth deploys the code, and she's, oh, while well, she's deploying the code, um, she's thinking about how metaprogramming is a convention tool. It allows us to abstract behavior. It allows us to think into um, what would be a framework like if we had the opportunity to build one. And this is something that Rails, for example, is uh, technically good at it. But when you're trying to specialize object, or when you're trying to find special cases, or modify something that has been already created, then is when you get into problems. Because the specialization in metaprogramming is not easy. On the other hand, object-oriented programming is creating building blocks that will reuse and it will use the single responsibility principle, for example, to create a bigger and bigger system. And lastly, functional programming focuses on behavior. And there were a lot of people, or there are a lot of people who talk about how functional programming tries to focus on avoiding state mutation. But I think Tim said it very good earlier today that we have to focus 
on objects that be or objects that do, that objects that have uh, behavior, and that's why functional programming, I think the important part is focusing on the behavior of the object. And as what Elizabeth was thinking about this, the moon was rising in the sky. So she ran away to see the king, and the king was standing, looking at the window. Oh, Elizabeth, thank you for fixing the moon. You have bring order to the kingdom and happiness to my heart. But let me talk to you about performance. How come I have to wait 28 days to see the full moon? But that, my friends, is a story for another time. 